Dear Esther, I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. But although I have all the reports and all the witnesses and have cross-referenced them within a millimetre using my ordnance survey maps, I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. It's somewhere between the turn-off for Sanford and the welcome brake services. But although I can always see it in my rearview mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. And yet again I'm given the choice to go right or left. And there's a huge boat down there. Stranded long, long time ago. Already rusty. And it had containers loaded on it. I guess we could investigate it to get some info what's going on on this island. But first I'm going this upper road and take a look over here. Looks like eventually we will go down anyways. All night the boy has kept me lucid. I sat when I was at the very edge of despair, when I thought I would never unlock the secret of the island. I sat at the edge and I watched the idiot boy blink through the night. He's mute and he's retarded and he has no thought in his metal head but to blink each wave and each minute aside until the morning comes and renders him blind as well as deaf mute. In many ways we have much in common. No sign of anything. Um, no sign of anything letting us know which what what stuff was loaded on this container ship. A lot of boxes that all look the same. This lightning thingy in the water. I mean, it needs energy from somewhere. <clears throat> so someone probably exchanged the batteries every now and then. <laughs> or maybe it's solar powered. No idea in which um, in which year this whole mod plays. I had kidney stones, and you visited me in the hospital. Oh, kidney stones! After the operation, when I was still half submerged in anesthetic. Your outline and your speech both blurred. Now my stones have grown into an island and made their escape, and you have been rendered opaque by the car of a drunk. Is this what Paul saw through his windscreen? Not Lot's wife looking over her shoulder, but a scar in the hillside, falling away to black forever. Okay. Some signs of civilization. I've begun to climb, away from the sea and towards the center. It is a straight line to the summit, where the evening begins to coil around the aerial and squeeze the signals into early silence. The Bothy squats against the mount to avoid the gaze of the aerial. I too will creep under the island like an animal, 
and approach it from the northern shore. There was some sort of a stable. Earlier, the narrator said something with um, animals. They had animals here, but now the um, the air is too thin for animals, and the land is not. Um, how do you say? Well, the animals can't eat it. <laughs> the bothy was constructed originally in the early 1700s. By then, shepherding had formalized into a career. The first habitual shepherd was a man called Jakobsen, from a lineage of migratory Scandinavians. He was not considered a man of breeding by the mainlanders. He came here every summer whilst building the bothy, hoping eventually that becoming a man of property would secure him a wife and a lineage. Donnelly records that it did not work. He caught some disease from his malcontented goats and died two years after completing it. There was no one to carve white lines into the cliff for him, either. I hear a radio again. And there's signs on the wall. Let's check out this house. Um, polluted is the right word. The earth and everything is um, polluted. So the sheep and animals can't eat anything. Ah, uh, this is the one of the color containers. So it must be must have been drawn recently. Inventory. A trestle table we spread wallpaper on in our first home. A folding chair. I laughed at you for bringing camping in the lakes. I was uncomfortable later, and you laughed then. This diary. The bed with the broken springs. Once asleep, you have to remember not to dream. A change of clothes, Donnelly's book, stolen from Edinburgh Library on the way here. I will burn them all on the last morning and make an aerial of my own. Hmm, nice house. And he has one of those boxes from the container ship. Oh, look at this in this cave. There's some sort of light inside, some glowing torch maybe. And we still have this whole cliff in front of the lighthouse. So we probably have to go all the way around. Oh, that's a deep, deep cliff. In a footnote, the editor comments that at this point Donnelly was going insane as syphilis tore through his system like a drunk driver. He's not to be trusted. Many of his claims are unsubstantiated, and although he does paint a colorful picture, much of what he says may have been derived directly from his fever. But I've been here, and I know, as Donnelly did, that this place is always half imagined. Even the rocks and caves will shimmer and blur with the right eyes. A magical place with a mysterious story to it. And hopefully soon we will find they out found more. Jacobson in early spring. The thaw had only just come. Even though he'd been dead nearly seven months, his body had been frozen right down to the nerves and had not even begun to decompose. All around him small flowers were reaching for the weak sun. The goats had adjusted happily to life without a shepherd and were grazing freely about the valley. Donnelly reports they hurled the body in fear and disgust down the shaft. But I cannot corroborate this story. Another dead ship. Only down to Thriftwood.
And looks like we are going in another cave. I hope we still have batteries in our flashlight. Climbing down to the caves, I slipped and fell and have injured my leg. I think the femur is broken. It is clearly infected. The skin has turned a bright, tight pink, and the pain is crashing in on waves, winter tides against my shoreline, drowning out the ache of my stones. I struggled back to the bothy to rest, but it has become clear that there is only one way this is likely to end. The medical supplies I looted from the trawler have suddenly found their purpose. They will keep me lucid for my final ascent. Oh, that's definitely becoming a little bit scary. Who put on that candle? And this weird noise in the back. Ah, oh, we have to go down. We're gonna slip. <laughs> 